Welcome to another session of uh, Six Patterns. My name is Max. I'm Kevin. And today we are going to tackle another case. Great. One of the main, uh, main six patterns here. And today we're not going to give any clinical history at all. Okay. Which is how they usually come to us. Right. Anyways. So can we solve it without clinical history? That is the question. So we'll start with this case, low power, as we do with all of our cases. And we're trying to get a sense for the main category, the main pattern of injury here. Right. And so what would you say about that? Well, I mean, before pattern, I look at the color. It looks awfully pink. It is pink. And uh, there's some space occupying thing in these three or four cross sections from the wedge biopsy. I get a sense that there are parts of the wedge biopsy that are involved and parts that are not involved, which I might miss if I got up too close. So from this magnification, I'm getting a sense that we got nodules here. I think that's probably a good sense here that we're dealing with nodules. Now, nodules oftentimes come across your desk in the form of needle core biopsies. And probably one of the best, uh, one of the best cases to get because you know the clinical history if you get a needle core biopsy, right? It means the patient's got a nodule. It's got a nodule or a mass. And so that needle core has to explain the mass. But in other cases, when patients have more diffuse nodules, sometimes they go on to a wedge biopsy like we have here. Right. So we're dealing with nodules. What things come to your mind when you think about nodules? Well, obviously, if you know tumor has to be there, we've got to exclude tumor. Uh, the next major cause of nodules is granulomatous disease. That's a huge like player, like sarcoid. Sarcoid is a huge cause of nodular disease. Right. So do you think this is sarcoid? I don't know. We'd have to go a little bit more closely, okay. but it is pink. Yeah. I haven't gotten a sense for the distribution. Sarcoid is, always has a lymphangenic distribution. Right. And that means pleura should be involved. If we had pleura, if we, had we should pleura. have some pleura. There's a little bit of pleura here, but it looks like the nodules are a little bit away from the pleura. Right. So once we get into the nodules category, you have to go to higher power, figure out more histologic features in order to better define the nodules. Right. So... So do you, can we figure out where these nodules are centered in the lung anatomy? Looks to me like there's a bunch of arteries in there. There are a bunch of arteries. Sort of gathered close together probably by the pathologic process causing some pulling in or contraction. Yeah. And there's a nodule within the nodule right there that's awfully pink and has a kind of a blue center. Let's go look at that. Let's look at that a little bit more closely here. Wow. Yeah. So what is this pink material? Uh, it looks to me like fibrin. I think that's definitely fibrin. And what is this bluish material here in the middle? Well, it looks to me like karyorectic debris and maybe some acute inflammatory cells. What does karyorectic debris mean for the non-renal pathologist? Nuclear dust. Nuclear dust. So these are neutrophils and other cells that are giving up the ghost and undergoing apoptosis. Right. And we're left with this, this nuclear dust, this debris here in the middle of a ball of fibrin. Now, we've got nodules, we've got nuclear dust, we've got necrosis right. with fibrin. Regardless of the status of the patient, what has to be at the top of your differential diagnosis? Infection. Now we've wandered from pattern four, sorry, pattern five. Nodules. Nodules. We've wandered into acute injury because we've got karyorectic nuclear debris, maybe some neutrophils and fibrin. Exactly. So we're combining nodules and fibrin together. Nodules and acute lung injury together. Right. Exactly. And now we've got a giant cell. And now we have a giant cell. So now we have this granulomatous inflammatory cell infiltrate surrounding areas of necrosis and fibrin. All things that make me think about infection. Absolutely. Infection, this is, infection, infection. No matter what the stains show, this is this should be signed out as infection leads the differential yeah. diagnosis. Nodular necrotizing granulomas favor infection. Right. Now, Do we need some why, stains? Why is it not GPA? Why is it not Wegener's granulomatosis? <laughs> yeah, so this is a big confusion point. Uh, two things get, get confused when you have necrotizing granulomas in the lung. GPA... Previously, Wegener granulomatosis and so-called necrotizing sarcoid, which today we think is a form of necrotizing vasculitis, kind of like GPA. So one of the rules I have is when I have necrosis and giant cells, if I can find one granuloma, 
that doesn't have necrosis, GPA is off the table. True story. It's a, it seems unusual, but GPA does not make granulomas without necrosis. So we hunt around. We need to look and see if we can find a granuloma. And what else about the color of this necrosis? This is pink. And necrosis G of GPA is always blue. Right. Always blue. And it's blue because it has typically so much carrierectic nuclear debris. Exactly. From cellular breakdown. And what about the shape of this? Nice and round. Yeah, it doesn't have that irregular serpiginous geographic. Uh, appearance or geographic appearance of GPA. Exactly. So I think we could probably make the case that we've got some collections of histiocytes and vague granulomatous inflammation here yep. with no necrosis. necrosis, which again would go along with infection over GPA. Right. So this particular case got sent in to us. Uh, AFB GMS stains done appropriately. Uh, as you would want to do on any case that has this type of uh, necrotizing granulomatous inflammation, they were read out as negative. But when we went back and reviewed the AFB, within these areas of necrosis, actually quite a few positive organisms within the areas of necrosis. So acid fast rods, huh? Acid fast rods. Cool. So this is a case of granulomatous infection with mycobacterial uh, organisms. Uh, you know, we think about tuberculosis as the most common cause worldwide, but in the U.S., Mycobacterium avium and other atypical, atypical. mycobacteria seem to dominate the picture. Uh, exactly why that is hard to say. Maybe we should have a, another, we could do another cast on that. Another session on that. Great. Well, that's it for today for the nodules, Great. right? Pattern 5. Pattern 5 nodules. Covered.